How to Install Jenkins on Alma Linux 9. Here's today's starting point. I have a fresh installation of Alma Linux 9. I've also gone ahead and done a full DNF update on this instance to make sure that all the packages are fully up to date. The first thing that we're going to need to do is install the JDK on this instance. Now I've chosen to use the Timurin distribution of Java to do the installation on. So let's take a look at that documentation. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating our repository, pointing at the Adoptium repo. Then we'll do a DNF install for the version of Java that we want to use. So let's go ahead and copy this section right here. And let's go back over to our shell, paste it in. Now I'm currently logged in as root, so I'm not going to have any permissions issues. Now you'll notice one thing here in this copy and paste. It's going to process Etsy OS release. So if we go ahead and take a look at this file that was created, so we'll say vi Etsy yum repos d adopt yum repos, we're going to see that it's pointing at Alma Linux, but there isn't an Alma Linux distribution available through the repository. So I'm going to change Alma Linux to RHEL. So we're going to be taking a look at the Red Hat Enterprise Linux repository within this distribution. So let's go ahead and save this. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and do a DNF update so we can see that the repository is picked up. We see Adoptium is now added. Now with the version of Jenkins that we're going to be installing, we can either run Java 17 or Java 21. I'm choosing to run Java 21. So we'll paste in DNF-Y install Timurin-21-JDK. Let's go ahead and hit Enter. Now that the installation is complete, let's go ahead and make sure that it's really there. We'll say java-version, and we'll see here that we have the version 2103 installed on this machine. Now we're ready to go ahead and install Jenkins. So what we'll do is we'll go over to Jenkins.io, click on the download link, and we'll end up on the download and deploy page. Let's go ahead and scroll down underneath downloading Jenkins. We're going to install the stable version, which in this case is 2.452.2. Click on the Red Hat Fedora Alma Rocky CentOS link. Here it's going to give us the instructions of what we need to do to do the installation. First off, we'll do a wget to get the Jenkins repository. We'll import the key, and then we'll go ahead and install Jenkins. Now we're going to need to use wget. Let's first and check and see if wget is installed. So if we type wget, it's not found. So let's go ahead and say dnf-y install wget. Now that that's installed, let's go ahead and go back over We'll copy our wget line here to download our repository definition. Let's go ahead and import the key necessary. And now we're ready to go ahead and do the installation of Jenkins. So we'll say dnf-y install Jenkins. Now that the installation is complete, let's see what's happening with the service. So we'll type system ctl dash dash full status Jenkins. And we can see here at this point, it's loaded, but it's inactive. So the service did not automatically start upon installation. And that's actually good for us because we want to make some configuration changes to our startup. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to type system ctl edit Jenkins. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in a definition between the anything between here and the comment below will become discarded. So what we put here is what our configuration is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in my configuration that I want to use. I add in the service block, and I'm adding in two environments. The first one is Java Ops, which contains preferring IPv4 stack, setting up a tempter, and setting our time zone to America and New York. I'm also setting up Jenkins Ops so that when the plugins are extracted, instead of being extracted within the plugins directory within the Jenkins home directory, I want them extracted into a plugins directory under varcash Jenkins. Let's go ahead and save this. Now the temp directory that we specified in that configuration does not exist. So we need to go ahead and create that. So I'll go ahead and say make dir var cache Jenkins temp. Since the service is going to be running as the Jenkins user and group, I need to make sure the ownership on this directory is correct. I just created it as root. So I need to change the ownership to Jenkins Jenkins. And now let's check our status, even though we haven't started it yet. So we'll say system ctl dash dash full status Jenkins. Notice something a little bit different from when we ran status earlier. We now have the override comp file. The override comp file contains everything that we put in during the systemctl edit step. Two more quick things. Let's go ahead and say systemctl show Jenkins. 
And this shows us everything that system D is going to be using to control the service. So we'll go ahead and quit out of this. And one more thing to make sure everything is fine from a system D perspective, I'm going to type system D, analyze, verify Jenkins.service. Now we did not receive any type of output from that. So that tells me that the verification was fine. So now let's go ahead and start the service and install Jenkins. So we'll say system CTL start Jenkins. Now that the service has started, let's check our status. So we'll go ahead and say system CTL dash dash full status Jenkins. We can see that we're active up and running. If we go ahead and scroll right, what we're gonna see in our user bin Java line under C group, we're gonna see all of the different args and options that we added when we did our system CTL edit. Let's go ahead and exit out of this. Now, before we do the setup, let's go ahead and check our log. The way we'll do that is we'll type in journal CTL dash U Jenkins. And if we scroll down to the bottom and scroll right, we can see that we're fully up and running. Now we need to go ahead and set up our Jenkins instance. I'm going to go ahead and copy our password here for setup. Let's go back over to our browser. I'm going to type in the URL for my controller. I'll paste in the administrator password that we just copied. I'll click on Install Suggested Plugins. We'll go ahead and create our user account. Confirm our URL, click on Save and Finish, and then go ahead and click on Start Using Jenkins. And now at this point, we can go ahead and start setting up our agents, creating our jobs, creating credentials, and start using Jenkins. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.